Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to continue talking about GIMP and the basics tutorials, and today we're going to be looking at an overview of the tools. Now, of course, GIMP can be used on Mac, Windows, and Linux, so this is not exclusively applicable to Linux. However, I am recording this on Linux Mint 20.2, which is the current version of Linux Mint when these tutorials are being done. This is also going to be GIMP 2. Uh, was it 2.10? And apparently I don't have my GIMP in user installed. There it is. 2.10.18 is the exact version of GIMP that I am using for reference. Most of these things have not changed in the time I have been using GIMP, although there were a few little tiny exceptions here and there. So what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and jump back over to our space. And in our previous tutorials, we did talk a little bit about installing plugins. We talked about organizing our space, basically locking panels, putting everything where we would like them to be, setting some system defaults. Now, if you've used 2.8 and not have gotten as much into 2.10, probably not likely because 2.10 is pretty old now. Um, one of the greater things about it is it actually does finally save tool settings how you've last used them. That's actually a good feature. Um, but what we're going to do here today is we're going to talk about what the different tools do, and we're not going to focus on any of them in any great detail. Now, of course, uh, we can go ahead and just create our new document as we've done before. So uh, I did talk about how to create a, a default document template. This is, um, I think this is a, 10, um, a 1080p document with a transparent background. We did talk about the little bug in that, where if you create it and then save it as a template, it doesn't save the transparency correct. Hopefully the GIMP project fixes that, but we also talked about how you can manually edit this guy and fix that directly. Now what we're going to do here, let's go ahead and um, I'm just going to go ahead and make this guy having a white background so we can clearly see what is going on here. Um, and uh, Or should we do something that's a little bit more gray so it's not quite as hard on the eyes? Let's do that. All right, so what we're going to do here, and I'm also just going to go ahead and drop something on here. We'll go ahead and drop a space alien on here and uh, I have my layers set where I can just quickly uh, do some stuff there with hotkeys. All right, now we got an alien sitting on the middle. And what we're going to do here is just talk about the different tools and what they can do. Again, we're not covering any detail on these tools. We can break them up into individual groups and do some detailed work, what you can do with them uh, later on. But I just want to introduce your basic tools panel. Now, the other thing that I do want to mention is I do not like tool groups. Uh, I think Photoshop does tool groups because it does put its tool icon really small on the side of the panel. It does make sense. Default on 2.10 does still use these tool groups, and I don't like them, so I turn those off. So I did talk about that in a previous video under Edit Preferences, and down under the Toolbox, you can check or uncheck the Use Tool Groups option. So if you do that, you can see it condenses down. I don't like using it, so that is how mine is. So if your GIMP is probably going to have the groups by default unless you have unchecked that box. Um, so anyway, let's just go ahead and walk through. Obviously, uh, additionally, I do change the icons of the tools, so I'll just kind of indicate what it is. The move tool, which is an M hotkey. So if you have other things going on and you push the M hotkey, it should move you back over to the tools. This is quite simple. You just grab it and you can move it anywhere in space. So that's kind of what uh, what we get in inside of our move tool. Now, the centering tool, this is the next one. The centering tool will center any layers according to any parameters you set. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold the shift key to select different layers. So if I click the first one, notice the white boxes around my outer gray. That means that everything else that is selected is going to align itself to the first selected layer. So I hold shift. Now we'll click our alien. You'll see that now it added the white boxes around this. So now we use these guys and we can align them in a variety of different means. And then if you have multiple different items, you can actually use the distribute options. So let me go ahead and drop something else on here. Uh, we'll go ahead and do another space alien. And using the same tool, 
grabbing three items, hit the distribute button. This is going to center them all. They're all this way. This is going to be distribute them evenly horizontally, evenly horizontally. So there's a lot you can do with this individual uh, option here. So we'll just go ahead and leave it right there for now. I guess for anybody with uh, OCD here, let me just go ahead and uh, get rid of that one. <laughs> a little little dot there was might have been messing people up. All right. Anyway, uh, our next tool is going to be our rectangular select. We also have an elliptical select. So these guys are going to operate the same ways. Uh, you just go ahead and grab a portion. Now, what I like about this, um, you can grab the edges here and refine the edges. I thought there was a button. There you go. There's a sequence of buttons you can hit. So this is the shift and the control is going to give you the ability to expand in and out under a constrained portions like this. And then if you're holding your shift and your alt, you're going to maintain your square proportion. You have the same types of things going on with your elliptical tool. Of course, this is going to select just the things within your uh, scope. So you can see that uh, when I start selecting something, holding the shift and alt gives you the the rounded portion. Now that anything is selected, anything that we do is going to be applicable just to that selection, as you can see there. So um, I'm going to hotkey to deselect everything. Shift, Control, and A is going to default to select. Of course, we also have our lasso select tool um, or free select tool. This guy here is where we can trace out an individual element. And then this will allow us to select things in a sequence. So there you go. We'll just do that. And then you can see that anything that uh, we have put around in dots, we can go ahead and select like that. So the next one is the scissor select tool. This one's really good for getting out individual uh, items around images. So what you're going to do is you're going to start by selecting the por first part you want to do. And then it's going to intelligently select the color schemes around it. So you can see what I'm doing here, getting close to it, and it's hugging the side of the pixel colors. So it's not going to give us an, an absolute perfect select, but it's going to give us something that's pretty close to what we need. And then we can go ahead and get everything refined from there. We're just going to go ahead and uh, patch it back up quickly. There you go. Holding your minus there is going to get us uh, deleting a tool. It's, there's that. And push enter, and now it will select everything within the selection. Now, I will note here real quick, this is uh, going to be a little bit of a side, but one of the things that you can do is you can actually save selections to a path, and then you can use those paths later. So we're going to go up to our Add Tab menu, Add Tab, and then Paths. And then the options down here, we can do a selection to path. And this is going to create a path that we can come by at any later time, grab it, and make a selection of that individual path. So that'll actually come up. There's a path tool coming up soon. But uh, I actually use this in my uh, Distro Wars option where I can uh, add two different backgrounds. I have paths selected to delete portions that I don't want on the individual pages. All right, so there's that tool there. So the next tool is going to be your foreground select tool. For this one, we will need a picture that is uh, does not already have some transparent backgrounds. This is really designed to grab images off of um, uh, off of things that have have complicated surfaces but very contrasty backgrounds. So if you look at the GIMP tutorial on this, it's going to be something like a flower, a pink flower on a very, very dark background or something. Uh, the only image I have on my computer here that's uh, nice and useful is going to be the YouTube play button. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to start by going around the image that we would like, making sure to have enough of the extra background we're trying to get out of. Hit enter. This is going to create a mask. Now we're in a paintbrush tool, and you just want to paint on the inside the type of color that you would like. You can hit your preview mask to preview what it's going to look like. 
hit your select option and you can see that it's only going to select the portions within here. So now I can do, uh, I could do something like invert and delete everything but that. Um, of course, I would need to uh, add an alpha channel to get rid of it all together, but uh, there you go. So that's how you would, uh, you would do something like that. So that tool there is, uh, I've actually don't generally use that tool. I just find there's other things that, that do better what that one should do, like actually our next tool. This is the one I use a lot. This guy's going to be a fuzzy select tool and you just click it and it's going to highlight anything that's basically a contrasty background. So I can go ahead and uh, add a selection there, 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 and I can delete everything that's black. I like that tool um, way better than using the foreground extraction tool. I think it just works so much better. So that's what we have there. All right, the next one, this is going to be the select by color tool. So there is a threshold. So on this one, you're going to click it and it's going to go through the entire layer and select everything that's similar in color to the portion that you've selected. And then there's a threshold as well. So you can increase or decrease your threshold to make it work a little bit better. But that's going to be useful if you have uh, a lot of very similar colors. Let's go back to our aforementioned one and click on this guy here. You can see it's going to select everything on here that's white pretty well. Well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and keep this layer here because I keep on coming back to it. We'll just move it down there. All right. So the next one is going to be our crop tool. Remove edges from an image or layer. And I can say I've never actually used this one. Just go ahead and copy what you need. Hit enter. Boom. It's going to crop eh, everything out of the image from that. Whoop, I don't want to do that. Uh, so, uh, and you can actually select current layer only. You can see the tool panel. Again, we'll cover the tool panels a little bit later, but you can just do current layer only as well. Come back to your selection. like that. So that'll how you can how you can just do a, just an individual layer. All right. So the next one, we have a unified transform tool. Uh, what this guy's going to do is um, click on an individual uh, image with a layer selected. You can go ahead and grab the triangles here. You can do a wow. Wow. So a lot of different things you can do with this one here. You can reset it. You can readjust it. You can do transform. So once you figure out what you want, just go ahead and um, hit your enter and it'll stay there. All right. And then your next one, very similar to it. Just click on it, whatever our active layer is. This is a simple rotation. We can actually define exactly where the center is. By default, it's going to be the very center of the image. Once again, hit enter and it'll do the same. This one here will just scale it by the different dimensions that we have. You can lock it or unlock it over here. So basically you can figure it this way. The unified transform tool can go with multiple different directions at once. The rotation and the scale tool just go with their individual angles. Next one is the shear tool. This guy's going to give you the ability to um, angle it across, uh, just basically shear it across an individual angle. This can be useful for if you're doing, um, uh, I've done some stuff with this to match alignments with screens on images and things like that. But there's also the, um, uh, there's a perspective tool, which is better. And yes, I, I know that we missed one. With the perspective tool, we can uh, give it a different perspective. So you can do this if you want to make it look like it's coming out of a different angle or something like that. So I'll do this for um, wall images, uh, stuff like that. The one I skipped is just simply a flip tool. Yay! All right, then we have our 3D transform tool. Let's go to the other alien for this one. So our 3D transform tool, we have the ability to just grab it and rotate it around any given different angles. And 
And then we can actually do some things with locking in some different angles and stuff like this here. So this will tell us which axis it's rotating around over here. All right, we're going to reset that guy there. The handle transform tool. Just kind of grab it by the handle and move things around. And send your alien spinning through time. And again, the closer you get back down to your actual angle there, the better. We can transform or just reset the image. Warp transform. So we have size and things like that. You can kind of see as I move around it, it kind of messes them up. We go, we'll make them look like a, the screen painting. So it's going to warp just in a small portion. You have your size, your hardness, your strength, your spacing over here. All right, so if I do the size, there you go. And the cage transform. This one on 2.8 um, crashed GIMP. To my understanding, they have fixed it. I've never actually tried to use it since. So let's see what happens. So we can create just a little custom cage around our image. Now it's computing the cage, and so now what we're doing is you just grab these individual points, move them, and it will adjust the images around the points to what we're trying to do here. So you can see what kind of what it's doing. So you can do this and make the alien look like it's being sucked into a warp or something. Didn't I see that on like Mac and me, you know, <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, undo all of that. Um, now we're on to our simple, more common, basic ones. Basically, your bucket fill tool. Um, you know, no surprises in, in that one there. Our gradient tool. And then now I'll note that the bucket and gradient tools, there's a gradient palette over here. So you can select your different gradients and do things like that. All right. And then you can select whether you're going to be doing, you can select what your gradients are. And I believe you can actually come down here and uh, we'll look at the, the shapes and things another time when we do a little bit more, more details there. But you can do palette fills. You can do gradients um, over here. You can do a foreground, background, or a pattern fill with the bucket. I should indicate that as well. Again, we'll cover those in more detail. Now, the next ones are just going to be a series of paint tools. So the paintbrush tool, of course, you have your paintbrush options, and then you have your sizes, aspect ratios, basically, you know, nothing too fancy, just your painting. This one is the pencil tool. So hard edges. This one is smooth strokes. And then we have the airbrush tool. Calligraphy style painting here. Now, a lot of these, they, they look the same to you mostly. Um, these are going to be changing slightly based on all the individual settings we're doing. So you can see the calligraphy. We can do a circle, a dot, a diamond, things like that. So we have a lot of different options that, that we have. Paintbrush tool, use my paint brushes in GIMP. Never used that one before. All right. Erase tool, obviously we can erase. You'll notice that it's not erasing uniformly now. It looks like Freddy Krueger got him, right? <laughs> um, actually, here, this is Freddy Krueger got him. Right. Uh, we're just selecting different brushes from our, our brush section over here. The clone tool, this guy here, let me go back to a regular brush. This guy here is we're going to be able to grab an image on something, hold your control key, hit your enter, and then now you will be able to copy uh, in an exact clone exactly what part is selected. So you can use this to make another copy, duplicate it, anything like that. Oftentimes I'm going to use this to patch up images where you've overlaid images on top of each other, things like that. 
So the next one is the perspective clone tool. This one's an interesting one. So what we're going to do is we actually have to use the tools over here to get our perspectives figured out. So the first thing we want to do is click on the image and get a perspective that we would like. So let's do something like this, which is going to be really weird. Now that we have the selective grabbed, we're going to grab an individual point that we would like. Let's do that. And now you can see as I'm cloning it, now it is cloning it over the perspective that we have changed. So the clone tool does the exact clone over. The perspective tool, we grab the portion that we would like to change the perspective of the image, and then we just go ahead and um, do the the whole whole thing there. So a little bit more confusing, but you need to do the modify and then you need to do your perspective clone once it's done. Very interesting tool. Never used that one before. All right, our next one is going to be our healing tool. Um, I will use this one if I'm doing a landscape. And what it's going to do is we select the region that we would like. We can probably actually use it to fix the side of the alien's head here. And then what we do with it is we're going to scratch that so the next one is the perspective tool uh, or the healing tool excuse me so the healing tool is going to heal any changes between um, between anything by doing an average of the two colors so if I just grab like from the aliens chest here and go over here you can see it's kind of merging the two colorations together so that's a way that you can merge a couple layers together, things like that. And um, the smudge tool is going to be um, so what the smudge tool is going to do is it's kind of like smudging paint. So you're going to start with whatever your your color is or whatever else you're doing. And then we're just going to grab the portion and you can see what it's doing is it's really smudging all the colors together. It's doing an average of the individual colors. Also, again, good for smoothing out differences in between images. We have our blur or sharpening tool. Again, this will either blur or sharpen based on how we have our, our options set up. So this is the blur. You can see it's getting blurrier there. And then we have a sharpen option as well. Which is going to make it look a little bit sharper to the eye. Next is our dodge tool, dodge or burn. Very similar to the last one. We either do the select the dodge or select the burn. And then you can see it's, uh, it's either going to lighten it out. or darken it down. So these are actually kind of useful for adding some extra some extra colorations to, to things. Kind of makes it look a little bit nicer there, you know, just in a couple little spots. And our paths tool, let's go to the paths tool last. Obviously the text editor, we can just select anywhere on here, create a new text layer. And then there's a lot of different options. We'll cover all the different options and things that you have a little bit later there. So the next tool is going to be the color picker tool. So this guy here, you can use it to find any color on the page. Now, if you hold your shift, you can see that uses the use info window. So when you click on this guy here, uh, hold on, I do need to go back to the layer though. It didn't need to be on the right layer. You can see it's going to give us a pop-up here. It's going to show me the RGB, the pixel colors, the hex. So it tells me everything that we that we need. So if you need to know what, what color something is, this is really the tool that you want to use. You also can use it to set the foreground, to set the background, or to add it to the palette. So if you add it to the palette, you can see that uh, there's it'll add a new palette tool here, and then it will add it to the to the palette of, of colors that we're using. All right, so that is um, that is how your color picker is going to work. Next tool is going to be your measure tools. So this is going to measure angles and differences. So if you need to know what some angle happens to be, you can hit our user window info window there. 
That'll tell us our angle from our point. It'll tell us our length, our width, things like that. This one does not have the shift to get us the tools that we need, so we will need to click that in order to, to, to view that guy. And then we have our zoom tools just going to adjust the zoom. So you can use this to, to adjust whatever we want to do. So what is that? The, that's going to be Z. So if we're over here moving some stuff around, we're like, oh, I need to zoom in on that. There you go. That's how you can do that. All right, so the last tool I said we come back to is our paths. This guy here is going to work very much like your um, uh, your vector drawing tools. So these are can be a little bit more complicated. But just start, and then if you grab these guys and angle them out, it'll give you the ability to do um, uh, do the rounded edges and things like that. So that's really what these are designed for, is doing things like this. Now you can come over here, and you can grab the handlebars here to adjust for those curves. These are really good for doing individual curves. And of course, once you have your path selected, we can go back to that path option that I had there, and we can always add that to our paths. Once again, remember, here is the original selection we had. Here is this particular selection here. We can add either one of them to the selection that we would like. And that's actually a really good way. Now, these paths are shown up because the path tool is selected. If it's not, it'll just kind of show us what we have. So those are the basic tools in GIMP. Hopefully this will help you out and uh, help you understand how to use a couple of the different tools. And then in future videos, we will narrow in on some of these and talk about how you can do real practical things with GIMP and graphic design. So let me know what we should look at next in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.